Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger. So my friends, let's talk about fighting game characters. They're an odd bunch, aren't they? Coming in all shapes and sizes from luchadors obsessed with hot dogs to literal boxing kangaroos to a man who claims to be the president of Earth itself and you think maybe not so much, but then turns out he can harness presidentiality as an element from Earth. But for today, we'll be talking about perhaps the most requested character since I started this series, and that is Faust from Guilty Gear. Now, when it comes to ridiculous characters in fighting games, Faust might take the cake. He might just be the most ridiculous character in a franchise of Guilty Gear filled with ridiculous characters. Faust perhaps is the most ridiculous character, so let's talk about him. So just who is Faust and what is Faust all about? Well, Faust is a doctor, first of all. He may be like a 10 foot tall doctor who fights with a giant uh, scalpel, basically like a spear, but he still is a doctor and should be treated as such. Now, Faust's doctorly duties also kind of come with the fact that he wears a bag on his head as he didn't always wear a bag on his head, and we'll go into that a little bit more later on. Appearance-wise, his look seems to be evolving a little bit over the games. We had the previous look with the bald head, we have the current look which uh, survives from the XX series to the Exard series, and in the upcoming Guilty Gear Strive, we have a whole new look which is sort of sinister looking. Now, Faust is a bit of a carefree soul, I guess you can say. Uh, while he's trying to do the side of good, perhaps to make up for some bad in the past, he's just an odd duck and he doesn't really care who knows it. Uh, from just simple things like his intro here in Exard, yo, he's teleporting from nowhere, and in that carefree spirit, hey, are you a fan of Mary Poppins? So I think Faust is too, because he just takes that umbrella and he goes wherever he pleases. So with all that said here, here on the Ridiculous History of Fighting Characters, we also want to talk not just about the lore, but how the characters play. So let's take a look. So here we are now with Faust in game. This is his most recent incarnation, uh, Guilty Gear Strive as the time making this video, is not out yet. And hey, he's a bit of a silly guy, right? <laughs> I say the least. Uh, I hope you can tell just by his general mannerisms, you know, just how he kind of walks around. Maybe you're not most take them the most seriously of any given character, right? But with all that said, he can still mess you up. And also, uh, his stance he's holding here, very low to the ground. Well, yo, he's really tall, actually. And in Guilty Gear Strive upcoming, he actually stands up straight while he's fighting. But for now, he just kind of crouches low to the ground. So when it comes to things like general movement, on top of just the general oddities he has, like when he runs, he literally crawls across the ground. He does have an air dash like many characters in Guilty Gear, and when he air dashes, he swims through the air very literally. He just, you know, does a stroke here through the air and just goes for it, right? Uh, when it comes to the rules of reality, Faust, he doesn't play by those kind of rules too much, right? Uh, teleporting through magical doors, all that kind of stuff, it's kind of normal for him. Now, when it comes to his gameplay, well, first up, he's definitely what we call a longer range character. Like, that's his standing uh, slash. Otherwise, in other parlance, you can call this a medium, right? And it hits from pretty far away. He makes the full use of the range of the scalpel. Also, something like forward and heavy. Same deal here. And this is an overhead, too, by the way. Uh, so you do have to stand block it, although it's on the slower end of things. So, yeah, he definitely has the range. And when it comes to just general offense, his offense is as weird as the rest of them, right? So one of his main moves here is he rips off his own head and throws it at you. And it explodes. And him being a little bit of a wackier character, if he's in the way, he'll catch himself as well, right? So uh, you definitely have to beware of your own moves. And this is not the only move that does that as well. Uh, as well, you know, big on the pogo here. Uh, he can stick his tongue at you. He can summon flowers pop, spin at you, all this kind of stuff. It's a bit of a stance, if you will. He can do multiple things from it. And uh, it's important in combos and just important general gameplay. He has a proximity unblockable. You would normally call this command grab, but it's a little bit different. Uh, it's effectively a command grab though. But let's talk about the money maker. Everything I've talked about now move-wise is a distraction to this point. Because let's talk about the items. 
So one of Foss' core mechanics, and this is going to hold true through a lot of the games here, is Neniga Deru Kana. What will this be? And you do quarter circle forward light in most versions here, or punch if you will, and he just summons a random little guy. Hey, look at this. See? Here's a little mini Foss. And he's going to keep going, that brave little guy, till he hits. And the item you summon is random. This one here? Hey, we just got a little bit of bonus. A bomb? Hey, might blow us both up, right? So you can toss anything. That's a hammer. Uh, the golden hammer. That's actually rare. Uh, mini Foss. You just got all these things here. Uh, that was more candy, I believe. Bombs. Uh, one of his supers also is you burn some bar and you just toss a whole whack of stuff, right? Way there we go, right? And there were some meteors on top of that. So a big part of Foss' game plan throughout the games is legitimately just randomness. It is RNG, if you will, right? But there is a skill in harnessing the randomness, right? Uh, being able to have the wherewithal, the quick mind to know uh, when I'm going to be tossing items here to be able to quickly assess what the item is and formulate a game plan around it. So yes, while it certainly is random, absolutely 100%, there is a lot of skill in mastering that randomness. And other random things, like this is his dust. Uh, dust attack being attacked in Guilty Gear, and he turns into a baseball boy. And that's not just for show, it's not just for the dust attack alone. Because if you happen to summon the right item here, you can just give it the old home run swing, right? And uh, if it can hit the enemy, all the better, go from there. But it just gives you another layer of being able to act, you know, work with your random item summons. Meteors, maybe not so much. But uh, for a lot of the other items here, yeah, totally. You can just do a home run swing. And in the end, he's just uh, inherently a very silly character. Like, that is just what he's all about. Uh, so, you know, hey... Doctor says, uh, you know, bend over and cough. You got to do it. And as far as like instant kills go, well, this one, he just gives you face surgery for free. That's a nice guy, right? Free makeover. I guess, you know, who would argue that? Maybe not biking herself. Look at that. Look how beautiful anime she looks now, right? So yeah, Foss, very, very silly character. That's just all there is to it. And the silliness will continue in the upcoming Guilty Gear Strive. One of his moves, he gives you an afro, and it actually has big gameplay mechanics as it extends your hurt box, meaning you can get hit in the afro. And on top of that, it can also be like detonated, set on fire, there's a bunch of other stuff to it. So Faust, even though he's a little more sinister looking, will remain pretty wacky to say the least. Now let's get into the lore of the character. You know, just what is Faust about? And Faust is, I guess you can call him a renegade doctor. Not exactly licensed, if you will, right? And he's going around just basically trying to help others. Uh, he had a bit of an unfortunate past where mistakes were made, let's put it that way. And now he's just going around the best he can around the world to help people who are just a little bit outside of the system that can't normally get the help they need. So about that darker past here before it became the zany guy you now know him, right? Well, he did a bit of an operation with a patient and things went bad and unfortunately the patient passed away. Now it did become the light that he was kind of set up for, right? Uh, it actually wasn't his fault, but at the time he simply did not know any better. Foss skills were so great. He was called a healer with godlike abilities and when he lost that patient, it broke him frankly. And he went to become what we now know as Dr. Baldhead, who effectively was just a serial killer, and he went on a rampage. Now, over the course of the first Guild of Gear, during the second Holy Order tournament, which was the tournament of the game, Faust realizes, well, turns out I didn't actually kill that person, but as Dr. Baldhead, man, I did a lot of damage. From which point he went on vowing to save lives instead of taking them, you know, going back to his previous ways, but assuming the identity of Foss because, well, hey, as Dr. Baldhead, people knew him to be a pretty rude dude. Now, going past that later in the series here, Guilty Gear X2, Midnight Carnival, to Accent Core, to Exar, to Revelator and all that, Foss, honestly, he's not one of the more plot important characters, if you will. 
Uh, he's not like Soul or Kai or Dizzy. He's not on that level. But that said, with Dizzy specifically, during the events of Guilty Gear X2, he goes and tries to protect her because there's a bounty on her head and he knows everyone's after her. Maybe he didn't succeed in that exactly, but he had good intentions and was trying to help someone a little bit persecuted. After those events and during the course of Midnight Carnival and all that, Eno, the guitar witch, is just messing with everybody and he tries to set out to stop her. Canonically, he's not the one to put her down, but as he does it, once again, he's trying to do his best. But unfortunately, during a lot of these events, he finds out he still kind of likes hurting people. That part of Dr. Baldhead has not fully gone away. He truly wants to help, but the bloodlust isn't fully subsided. And now going on to Exard, he finds out exactly who sabotaged the original surgery, right? You know, which kind of set everything in the motion. And turns out it was Zato 1 by will of the Conclave. And who's the Conclave? Well, the Conclave is the New World Order. They are the Illuminati. So the Illuminati ruined the surgery. And why? Well, because he knows how to resurrect people from the dead straight up. And if he could showcase him resurrecting people, that would mess up their plan because they're resurrecting Justice, which is a gear, and they're doing that on the behalf of the Universal Will, who was made in the backyard by the Sage, and it's just a whole thing. Uh, check the Ramlethal video at the end of this video. There will be a link if you want more on that. It is the insanity of Guilty Air. But yeah, the Illuminati screwed him over, basically. And how do you exactly stick it to the Illuminati? Well, turns out... You basically wind up working with them in the end because it turns out they're being played too. It's just, you know, next level on next level on next level because Guilty Gear is weird like that. So one of the things Foss is doing in the course of Exard and Revelator is helping out with the Japanese colony. Japan is, without going into a lot of detail, very special in Guilty Gear. And there's a lot of weirdness and wackiness along with, you know, people being Japanese are basically superheroes. <laughs> and yeah, so there's stuff going on within the greater plot of Revelator, where the colony, where all the Japanese people are being held, uh, stuff's going down, stuff's kind of going bad there. And long story short, the person who is above the Illuminati is effectively using them to turn them into walking bombs, and that's no good for anybody. But luckily, Foss being the great doctor that he is, he manages to get around it and kind of saves the day on that end, while everyone else saves the day while fighting the Joker Pope, and yes, that's a real thing. And that's kind of it from there. Once again, Foss, unfortunately, is not one of the more story-important characters. He's always on the periphery of things, right? And as the joke character, I guess maybe that's what he should be doing. Uh, but we do know he's taking a bit of a turn come Guilty Gear Strive, as uh, the look and the feel of what he's all about is very different. I guess time will tell if he gave into some of the more sinister aspects of the character, going back to Dr. Baldhead, if you will. Uh, the look with the big dark glowing eye and all that, and you know, just the kind of sickly stance he's holding, it just doesn't read well, right? But I guess time will tell as far as our doctor friend goes, and just kind of what direction he's going in. Hopefully, he can be redeemed if he's kind of turning into a bad dude. And my friends, that all said, that is effectively false in a nutshell. He's definitely a wacky character. And he only seems to get wackier and wackier as the Guilty Gear series goes along. So if you like fun characters with interesting gimmicks, because the random item gimmick, it's very fun. It's very cool. Uh, it's certainly something to play around with. If you've never really harnessed anything like that before in a fighting game, it can be a bit of a rush if you get the right item at the right time and are able to exploit the right item at the right time as well. But with all that said, hey, well, I guess this is the end of the video. As always, these kind of videos are kind of out of the usual of what I normally do on this channel. So if you please could, you know, like, share around, all that kind of stuff, it helps a lot. And we'll see if we can get more of these done in the future. And of course, if you want to see other characters, please let me know. But other than all that, we're done. That's it. That's the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And since this is a Guilty Gear character, go out and play some Guilty Gear.